everybody now we want to welcome to the jimmy star show with ron russell actress producer writer director and new mom michelle tomlinson hello and welcome to the show thank you hello say hey she has her her daughter hope hi hope let me introduce you to everybody starting off with our cool outrageous man about town co-host mr ron russell hey welcome to our show i hope you have a good time Thank you so much. Thank you. And we have the man behind the boards, Mr. Chad Murphy. Hello, Michelle, and hello, Hope. Welcome to the show. Hi, Chad Murphy. <laughs> now we have a chat room. Well, I'm not going to say hello to Hope. I'm just going to send her God blesses and lots of kisses. <laughs> Pretty cute. <laughs> <There> you <go. laughs> Thank you. Then we have a chat room full of people. Peace. <laughs> she sings, too. She sings. She's going to be a great singer. So we have a chat room. Say hi to everybody in the chat room, Hope. <laughs> Say hey guys. <laughs> so we want to welcome you to the show. So where are you? Where are you in California? I am in yes, thank you. I'm in Sherman Oaks. We are in Sherman Oaks, California, and um enjoying the weather. It's cool today. It's like hoodie weather. It's beautiful. I used to live in Sherman Oaks. It's a great little area. I like it. Years ago. Yeah. Did you like it? What's to like? It was country. There was nothing there. Ventura Boulevard didn't have country. the stores it has now. And Tarzana was like, you could go duck hunting. Everybody lived in, no, it's true. Everybody lived in Studio City or Van Nuys. Yeah. But yeah. Sherman Oaks was kind of, you could, let me kill you really. This will fl flatten you out. Um, I have to, a, a famous movie star, my friend, if I could think of her name. <laughs> yeah. This is going back 50 years. Oh, who the hell is a woman? She bought her gorgeous house for $35,000. And I said to her, oh, my God, you must be doing well. How the hell can you afford a $35,000 house? And she said, well, the payments are like 300 a month. You know, it's not easy. And we had this whole conversation. Now, that very house in Sherman Oaks is about $12 million or something. <laughs> I mean, it's a joke. Sherman Oaks is... Which side of Ventura are you? The... Mountain North side or the valley side? The valley side. Okay, that's a little less money. She lived up in the mountainside, which now you, you can't. Tell. Oh, I know who it was. What's wrong with me? F F Brenda Vaccaro. Oh, you know who Brenda Vaccaro is. Don't no. shoot me if I don't. I'm terrible with names. Oh, Brenda Vaccaro, Burt Reynolds' love, and Brenda Vaccaro made so many movies. Yeah, but she's not even 50 years old to review. She's not 50, so how is she? She's not going to know. She might not know people from 50 years ago. I don't think it was 50 years ago, oh. maybe 30 years ago. <laughs> Valley Circle is where she lived, right off of Valley Circle. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm familiar with that. Yes, that's people Love who bought houses many, many moons ago here are so. It's okay. It's okay. I owned a house in Simi Valley, twenty nine nine. Now it's gone for about six hundred. All right. And when I lived in Simi Valley, it was all orange groves. And once a year, we had a, a hoedown. Or not, was it a hoedown or a showdown with the cowboys do? And everybody dressed as cowboys. Yeah, everyone dressed as cowfolk. We had covered wagons. We had barbecues out there. We did square dances. The children loved it. Why don't we do stuff like that again? Oh, right we might have we build there. communities. Huh? We could build communities again. Wouldn't that be fun, just to have community? Yes, it yeah. would be. I mean, this weird Pretty shit. Cool. If you live in a community and it's not even a community. <laughs> no, you know what I don't understand yeah. is this uh, play date stuff. That it's you'll have weird. To you have to it's... take your. Yeah. Go. Oh, it, it It's so weird because it's like dating, dating, where like these moms are such strange humans to me. I, I'm still not. I'm still yeah, trying to. I love you. I love you more by the minute. <laughs> by the minute, I love you. I could agree with you all night, I bet. It's. <laughs> It's it's just it's I, tough because these these women are very um, they're we're just not alike and it's it's kind of like trying to date date and going where are the cool people like where are the people who are feeding their children whole actual food instead of the stuff you open from a package and hand like there's just a lot of uh, qualities that are happening that I don't understand based on how I was raised and based on where we are globally now of background. How we raise children. Hmm? What's your what, What's your background? In other words, I'm from what? New Mexico. I was born Me and raised in northern New Mexico, Santa Fe, and Los Alamos. Okay, so yeah. 
you were you were raised well in other words if you're a european raised by european parents you eat differently right my father was from italy my mother was italian from new york but my grandmother was italian and she ran the house i never ate from a can i mean i don't know what that's all about my grandmother had he doesn't two, like eating from a can now either. <laughs> my grandmother had two chickens in the yard, so we had eggs. Oh, and we, oh cool. yeah, and we raised in the yard. We had um, beautiful um, vegetables of all kinds, tomatoes and cucumbers. I mean, That's beautiful. We ate natural yep. all my life. That's why I'm 100 years old and I'm still able to stand. I'm 100 years old and I was able to have a baby still. It's pretty incredible what we can do now. No, how old were you when you had the baby? Truth. You don't have to tell Oh, I can tell you. I I don't have qualms about age. I'm so happy to still be here. I was 39 when I had her. So almost 40 for your first baby. Yeah. Well, because I have two daughters. They're not married, and I, and they're up approaching that age, and I'm worried that they're not going to be able to have children. It's so interesting. I was told because um, a few years ago I had thyroid cancer, and I had this really big mess with endometriosis, and I was told by doctors that I might not be able to have kids. And it was like, okay, well... We'll see, you know, I, it, whatever, I'm the only one living in my skin, so we'll see what happens. And as soon as my husband and I had the talk of, well, maybe we'll just give it a shot, we simply gave it a shot, and two months later I was pregnant. And, and anything so can She's happen. like a miracle baby. That's why you call her Hope. The minute I found out I was pregnant, I was like, it's a girl and her name is Hope. Like, Hope. I love that, though. What sure. a nice story. Well, it is a beautiful story for all of the women out there who have had haven't had children at, at this age that there is yeah, hope. And there is. you know, my grandmother had my mother. My grandmother couldn't have children because she was four foot nine and weighed like eighty pounds. And when she had a baby, the baby would they would have to she couldn't pass it. So the right. doctor would say to my grandfather, Who do you want to save? The baby or your wife? He'd say, My wife. My mother was born to my grandmother when she was forty six years old. And they, yes, and they took my mother out at six months and wrapped her in cotton. That's what the incubator was back in 1910. That's when my mother was born. What? Yeah, and 46 That's years old. She blew out a baby. Yeah. That well, is just, amazing. Well, she had had children before, but they all had to be killed. Right. They went up there and they said they cut the baby in pieces and took it out in pieces. They killed the baby inside you and then cut it up and take it out. That They didn't have cesarean. They didn't know about it. It was what? primitive Gluten. back in 1910 and before that. Right. So right. women today, you know, it's wonderful how the science and, and you can really have a baby with all the stuff they do. Thank God for science. It saved my life when I had her. Uh, I had to have an emergency C-section because I knew something was wrong, but I couldn't figure out what it was. I knew she was fine, but I told the doctor, I said, I think I'm not okay. Well, what, what like, did you think was oh. wrong? Did I didn't know think? what was wrong with me. I just knew I was getting a really weak, like something just wasn't right. And he said, well, let's, let's figure this out. And I said, I think we need to do a C-section. I don't think we have time to figure this out. And as it turned out, I had a ruptured artery. And had where? I tried to... Where, uh, where, where was the ruptured artery? I never asked. Somewhere, okay. somewhere in my oven. Okay, so that's dangerous. Yeah. That's very dangerous. Totally. And, you know, here I am, Wait, and it's all good. have bled to death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So smart that you uh, Everybody you knew. in the chat room is saying congratulations, and they're so happy for you. And uh, say hi to Tristan. Tristan. Tristan's in Australia listening, so he has to get up at like 5 o'clock in the morning or whatever to hear this. We think oh, it, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I think he's crazy, but he does every week. We we get him That's awesome. He's he's great. He's wonderful. He's one of Tristan, our biggest. You rock. He's one of our biggest fans. I don't want to take over the whole we interview. Have, we have Estonia tuning in right now. We have Germany. We have England. England we have uh, and lots of people in the hey, United God. States. And so yeah. everybody's tuning in. So is your husband in the entertainment industry? He works over at Universal Studios. I uh, he so yes. What's my studio. Pardon. That was my studio many years ago when I did film, TV. I love Universal. I used to walk around it like a tourist. Imagine, and here I'm an actor doing on a weekly series, and I would be walking around fainting from it, just the sets and everything. It's so he's it. kind of in entertainment, so he's he's a behind the scenes person and not in front of the camera like you. He is he is a behind the scenes person. He actually helps manage things with um what do you call the. Halloween Horror Nights and Grinchmas. I love, oh, I love Halloween Horror Nights. 
I'm a huge I'm a huge horror movie fan, and and so I so and I just love all of that. So let's let's talk a little bit because you've actually done some horror movies too with some people that mm-hmm. have been on our show actually, but uh, actually a lot of people. You've been in movies with a lot of people that have been on our show in the past. <laughs> and I went I went through your IMDb just looking at it, but one thing. So you eat really well and take good care of yourself. I try. I still like potato chips sometimes. Not gonna lie. Okay, but you, because you, you won't die from potato. But chips. you do all these like kung fu movies and stuff. So are you like a kung fu lady? Oh, I was. I was. I used to take martial arts. Um, I haven't taken martial arts honestly in probably about seven or eight years. I, I had an awesome injury that pretty much just about broke my butt, and I so I kind of ch- chilled out on that because I almost had to cancel doing a movie from the injury. So, uh, I wouldn't call myself that so much now, but. I used to love. But you I do used... have like a series that's like ten of them or something, or twelve of them or something that mm-hmm. are like called Kung Fu Femmes. Yep. And I would imagine like everybody in it then is some kind of like you know, at least pretending to be some kind of martial artist. <laughs> oh my god, I I've worked with like some really incredibly talented people. There was this gentleman named Terry Tanier who did all of the choreography for every fight in every one of those. Uh, episodes, webisodes, and watching him move is literally like watching, it's like watching a river flow. I think if I was straight, I'd marry you because you and I think exactly alike. Last week's show, we had on a uh, kung fu fighter, actor, and I said to him, in the movie I saw you in, the beautiful thing about it was the choreography of the fight sequence. I found that fascinating. And here you are saying the same thing. We have to get married. Make me straight and I'll marry you. <laughs> well, <tell me> tomorrow. <laughs> Actually, it's just to give him props, his name was Mark Hoadley, and he's an actor and a stuntman. He, he, in 2012, he was inducted into the Martial Arts Hall of Fame. And uh, so he's like a hot bad Oh, his, like, his work was incredible. And he said his choreographer, he worked six weeks on a few moves. Just a few moves, not many. Six right, weeks. but to make it accurate, yeah. That's well, they were fantastic. dangerous moves, he said, that if anybody moved wrong, you could crack somebody's throat. Actually, both of our guests last week, because we had Pedro Miguel Arce on also. Loved him. <laughs> and he's like six foot something tall, True. but he's like 300 something. Two. He's like huge. He's like huge and not muscular. He's like a big, fat, huge, chubby guy. He's hilarious. Wow. He's, been, he's got like the greatest credits ever. You know, he's like in uh, True Detective and The Strain and all these great, great TV shows. And he's also a martial arts guy. And, and that's how he got started by kicking people's butt, you know, oh, on screen. And so it was just kind of cool to see that you've got all that stuff like going on, too. So so what is your uh, I see that you just finished a film called Polaris, which is not out yet. I'm going to assume it's just because it's I didn't see it. anywhere. <laughs> Correct. You know, I actually don't know where they are with the post-production of that. Hang on, Mikey. I don't know where they are with the post-production with that, so I have no information for you as far as when it would be released or any of that jazz, but it was a one-day great fun cameo role. I know, sweet baby. Somebody's wearing her cranky pants because she's tired. This is the first child we've ever had on. (laughs) No, 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 I don't think so. Yeah, it is. That wasn't a guess. We had a child star. You know, I want to say something to you, and I want your opinion on this. Mm-hmm. A couple of years ago, I was walking in Manhattan, and I'm stopped at a traffic light, you know, on the corner waiting to cross. And there's a woman looking down at a child that could have been more than three years old. And the mother kept saying, but honey, where do you want to go for lunch? Tell mommy, where do you want to? I would have beat that kid to death and said, come with me, you little bitch. <laughs> you know? I mean, you these parents. You would have beat that mom to death, actually. The kid's <laughs> trying to communicate, and that mom's kind of being an idiot. No, saying. but the mother's asking a three-year-old, where to, like the kid knows, I want to go here, right. I want to go. What does he know? Right. Name, the, she knew names of restaurants. The people are stupid, <laughs> these parents. I mean, I, actually, that's what I, would, I didn't mean to say I wanted to hit the child. I meant I wanted to hit the mother. <laughs> Not come on around. Stupid. Yeah. Kid. Where do you want to eat, honey? The kid should have said, you know, the most expensive restaurant, bitch, pay for it. <laughs> but anyway, you know, what, do you think talk- about, <clears throat> what do you think about how people are raising their yeah. children today with this? Um, they do everything for them, baloney. I have so many opinions that so many people don't share, and that's okay. I don't need to be popular with it. We are a high sugar, high processed food, high octane, high wheat, high, here's my phone, here's my McDonald's and and Burger King and garbage like that. That's our society now, and that's the popular thing to do for big, two big reasons. A, it's easy, 
uh, B, it's it's inexpensive. And due to where societally as where we are, is it hoy? You okay? <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Um, McDonald's we... will cost you a lot of money. It's not yeah. cheap, McDonald's. You, for that same money, you could go to a lovely Italian restaurant and have some, no, seriously, and have a pesto pasta, which basil is the best thing in the world to eat. With olive yep. oil and garlic, my God, it's... it's Couldn't it's, agree with you more. I couldn't healthy. agree with you more. And that is how we're raising our kids, is giving electron. And I am doing the exact opposite of all of that. Um because of my own personal journey and because I don't believe in giving my 15 month old child a $600 machine in order to entertain her when literally she just needs to be held or whatever. Uh, those are what's, what's a $600 my point dollar an machine? IPad. Oh, an iPad. I've seen actually, I've seen kids what? in her phone. I've actually seen no. kids walking through. Like if I'm walking through the mall and they're in a stroller and the kids are literally like little teeny kids that you wouldn't even think mm -hmm. knew how to use an iPad and they're playing with like there may be three, you know, and they're playing games and watching movies like on an iPad. And then the parents I... wonder why they're morons because they can't speak. <laughs> well, and there's no there's there's no attention span. There's there's so many things. And, you know, I have a, a very, very dear, dear, dear person in my life has uh, there's a couple of people who have young autistic sons and now there are a couple of things on our devices that can help be a tool yes. uh, for some of these autistic children so you know when i make a blanket statement of i'm not giving my child my phone or my ipad because i'm not a lunatic but there are also those cases where there are some apps or games or i don't really know what it is like learning like learning things and stuff but even so like at Correct. one not quite old enough to Four. do that anyway a very good friend of mine's no. No. A very good friend of mine's daughter has three children maybe seven eight ten whatever and they use their cell phones to goof on their mother at the dinner table okay like let's get out of here as soon as we can make believe mommy tell mommy this tell mommy that and the kids communicate well she caught on and she went over and grabbed one of them, and the kid said, uh, I'll, I'll, make, I'll just lie to mommy and tell her whatever, whatever. Go, go with it. So this is what families do now. They use their cell phones at a dining room table while eating to make fun of the mother who has prepared the meal. I would have got those three kids and banged their heads together and got those <laughs> machines and shoved them right up their asses. They wouldn't have known what hit them. I mean, and say I'm a, say I'm a, pers a, a parent that child abuse, yeah. Yeah, you got to abuse that, them sometimes. I if if I was even on the phone at dinner time, I would be like, you know, my dad what would phone? get off the what phone. What phone? If, well, you listen, know, phone phone. Yeah, phone. we didn't we didn't have cell phones. If no, the dinner we didn't. If, at dinner time, if the phone rang, my father used to say we didn't have machines either. My father would say, "Let it ring," and it would annoy me because some people would ring for ten minutes, you know, and you, and you <laughs> want to know who it is. Is it important? And nobody answered the phone. My father would say, "Malo Ducati." They're ill-mannered because they call it the dinner hour. Yep, that's my dad would say the exact same thing, exact same thing, just in English because he didn't speak Italian. Yeah. So let's go back to entertainment a little bit because we've only got to have her for a few more minutes and we haven't talked about entertainment. Mm -mm. She's been on. I want her more. I know, I know. But so let's. No, go. no, 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 no. Keep her on. Keep her on. We have another guest. You can't just keep her on. The other guest will wait. No, no big deal. <laughs> I will. We'll get them other. No, she's. A, no. I love her. All right, so she's intelligent. She's so first teaching. Of all, the reason I brought up Polaris only is because it Aww. starred Dave Vecchio. We have time, but let's talk about stuff. Uh, <laughs> Dave Vecchio, uh, who was on our show many years ago, who uh, I always like to see people how how their careers have progressed. You know, like we had him on maybe like three years ago, and he had like one good credit or whatever, and now he's got tons and tons of good credits. He's you know, doing really well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everybody's careers have advanced, and 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 you've done a whole bunch of cool. Like I, I know you did a movie with Debbie Roshan, and she's been on the show. I think that was called Axe to Grind. And yeah. do you like the genre? I I know you're doing a lot of them. I I like some of it. I'm a little. Um, I haven't watched any recent horror films for a little while. I really kind of enjoy the fun older slasher films. Um, the genre itself is really fun to work in, though. 
I love the creativity that goes behind it with special effects, especially like when they're practical effects, like uh, what we did in Brain Dead and Axe to Grind and Cellar Door. Those were all practical effects. I don't think anything was CGI'd. I don't think so. Um, so it was really, it's a really cool genre to work in. And I've worked with some really, really talented, kind, amazing, good humans, like Debbie Rochon, for example. Um, awesome. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, I th- I also saw Cellar Doors like coming out with a sequel. Oh, keep your fingers crossed on that. Okay, so that means there. the money's not there yet, but the idea is there. The you know who you look like? Amazing. I have to tell you right away. You look like a young Loretta Young. Now you don't know who Loretta Young is. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> you don't know the movie star Loretta Young. I am the worst. I really am. You have am. to look it up. Look it up. You have her cheekbones. You have her smile. You have her eyes. You Thank look you. like you could be her daughter. I will look her up now. She's sure. the one that had the baby illegitimately. That was Clark Abel's baby. And she pretended she went to Europe to adopt a child. And it was really her child with Clark Abel. That's oh. Yes, I've yeah. heard that. Okay. That's All right. Yes. Yeah, and I will look her up so I can get a better you sense like of her. visuals. You have the whole smile, the whole face. You could do her life story. <laughs> and it's a good Thank life you. story because of the adoption baloney that she swore that that child wasn't hers. And then there's a kid who was 10 years old. It looked like Clark Gable. It has his ears that stuck out. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, you can't get away from jeans. I actually like the, all the older horror films also. I like the ones without all the CGI. They're a lot more fun. Uh, just in general, and I know you did. You did another movie. I don't even know. Uh, it's, it was called Boston Strangler Untold, and the only reason I picked it up is because I've actually – I know Andrew Deboff and uh, Corin Nemec's been on our show a couple of times. And he was like a great like 80s or 90s you know, actor who, who I see is doing a lot of stuff again now, which I like a lot. It had Davis Faustino from uh, – um, Yep, uh, Married with Children. Yes. Yes, that's who I shared a scene with. Um, yeah, a friend of mine worked in – oh. Oh, what happened? It's okay. What happened? She's sitting there, totally chilling, and then she just kind of let it be known she wasn't okay. I, th- I think she's... Oh, oh there she is. There. She's is really right? close to going That's to sleep. That's Loretta Young. Okay, they put up a picture of... But Chad, not, Chad not, a good, up... not a picture that looks like our guest now. That's it. Yeah, but does. but no, like there's her. other pictures with that Loretta Young. Oh, is... Chad, Chad, Ron's being picky. Why'd you put that here? Because I'm going to sit on a pillow like you. I look like a dwarf. Oh, <laughs> Forgive our set. We're in the middle of of having our set change. So today we're temporarily in this stupid lounge thing. Usually we have a background and stuff. And this the seat, the lounge is like three feet down yeah, from no, the table. We're sitting lower than usual, so we I mean, feel kind of dwarfed. Talking <laughs> about large breasts, if I was a woman, I could rest my breasts so easily on this table. So <laughs> That's it's so absolutely cool. breast holding level. But let me you put a pillow. You guys are both beautiful and you're doing great. And I would have never... Never judged no. the, the the low seating. Yeah, we're a mess. That's okay. <laughs> we're, so I also wait, wait, hang on. Two hours ago, see this wall? I was painting it because there was a mural there of the, of New York City. And that's been removed. So what, now I, I, I had to paint. paint it another are you gonna paint another mural? No, 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 because we're selling the We're house. selling where we're living to move to you near you. We're going to Palm Springs. Back actually. home to Palm Springs. And that way uh-huh. we Studio. Oh, cool. We have you come on the show. We'll have you come and sit in a studio with us. <laughs> that will be so much fun. And Palm Springs is beautiful. Yes. I love Palm Springs. It's my home. So we're like working on that in the middle of all of that. And uh, and so so let's ask because we don't usually ask these kind of questions. First of all, I noticed you do some shorts. You do a lot of shorts. Do you find that as like a beneficial thing? Okay. Do you do that just to get your keep your name out there, just for more experience, or what is the the thinking process behind doing a lot of shorts? Fun. Okay. So you know, a- um, as an actor, you're not going to make money doing a short film, not by a stretch. But when you have like a fun character, <laughs> you're getting work me with fun. <laughs> hmm? You're not going to make any money making a big film either. <laughs> That's very, yeah. These you, days, it is almost didn't impossible. You, didn't you read the article that What's His Name wrote? Which What's about, His Name? I can't think of his name. <laughs> Oh. Okay, monkey. Anyway, he wrote a big article about to the union. Uh, this about how nobody's making money. Yeah, yeah that eighteen million dollars yeah. goes to Angie, Boy, yeah. Angelina Jolie, and the Don't other pay. people get sixty thousand. Yeah, I did. I did absolutely read that article, what was and his it was name? Um, that wonderful I can't think actor. Of, 
Love it him wasn't too. Kyle Chandler, but it, for some reason that's who keeps going through my He's head. He's the but... guy that with the voice. He, he was play... the guy that was in that Mandy Moore movie where he plays the preacher and she's dying. It's a great and movie. Also... The Mandy with... Moore movie. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, he played with that. <laughs> I don't mean Peter something. Movie. Is it uh Peter, Peter. Oh, Peter, forgot. Peter something. Anyway, uh, Coyote. Peter Coyote. Peter Coyote. Oh, yeah, he Peter was Coyote. Shelley Long. It, that's the movie I was just going to say with <laughs> Bette Midler. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's doing a whole campaign about it, trying to get our union, you know, the SAG and, and Street Union, to um, get after these people. Yeah. Because you do a lot of indie films. To make a, a living. I'm sorry? Well, you do a lot of indie films, like a lot of indie Independent stuff. We know oh, that because. So sorry, she's in the middle of a full Oops. tantrum. Hold on one second. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay, monkey. At least you're having a tantrum on a soft surface. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. This is a teething baby who's tired. Does she have already coming in? She, yeah, she... she's got molars coming in and her fangs. My mother was fast breastfeeding me, and she said she had to stop because I was chewing her nipples. I said, if, "How old?" I said, "Ma, how old was I that I had teeth? Four years old, five years old?" No, no, you know? no, no. But no, back in those days, I was born in 1940, and back in those days, children breastfed till almost four years old. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. And people say to me, "Ron, you're 77 soon." You look terrific. You're so energetic. You're so young. You're so thin. You're so everything. You look yeah. much younger. I said that came from being breastfed, ate only healthy homegrown food, and swam in the East River with all the urine and, and scat. <laughs> there you go. That strengthened your immune system right Absolutely. up. Absolutely. That was our beach. We used to go down there. And when if the cocky came along, we'd go like this to push it away with the water. And we'd yell, the meat's coming. The meat's coming. Oh, I, mean, I think I just threw up a little in my mouth. But well, that's all okay. the, yeah, I know, me too. <laughs> all, all, all the sewerage from uh, Queens and Manhattan used to go into the East River. Right. They stopped that now. Goddess says, how funny. <laughs> no, it's a true story. I swear to God, it's hey, a true Goddess. story. It did build my immune system. Absolutely. Well, I also noticed, okay, so like, because... Uh, we also, because I like looking at you. Really, have done a lot of st cool stuff. Um, but you did an episode of Miss Vampy, who Brooke Lewis has been on the show, and she's kind of like a friend of mine. I mean, just we tweet and and Facebook friends and everything, and she's done a lot of cool fun, a lot of cool fun things. But mostly, she does a lot to try to like actually help people and and give back to like the community and the, uh, I don't know, like which I like a lot. I like everybody who does that. Does does things, you know, that even though they benefit, it also helps and brings. And I back. feel safe and talking this next subject wait wait, wait let her. me finish this one that's what that was done <laughs> she didn't comment on it <laughs> but do, you know, I love... do, you, do you know brooke i do i do yeah i haven't seen her in a really long a time I've ever she seen my baby brooke. No, let, her com let her comment on she doesn't it. like brooke she said brooke was a bitch no she <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <didn't>. <laughs> nah, kidding kidding they made me forget what i was going to ask oh i would know what i was going to ask her I think I'm safe in asking you this question. It's a very high-powered question. What do you think about Bruce Jenner, transsexuality, and homosexuals? I am really glad that, well, there's a couple hundred things that just went through my mind. I'm glad that he is now being more true to who he's always related to, who he's always felt has been the truth inside. And I think that he wound up being quite the, um, I don't want to say front runner, but like a gigantic voice for transsexuals. I mean, gigantic. He was, and still she, it, she is now everywhere, right? And uh, I think that she really opened up what the struggle is really, really like for but anybody. But she's not a else. transsexual. That's my point. She still has a penis. She's a drag queen. Would that would she be considered a drag queen? Absolutely. See, I'm terrible. I, not actually, no. If, not if, in the if gay if community just doesn't consider not that bullshit. That way. That's not true. If you have your wango lopped off, mm -hmm. then you're a woman. Okay. He can't, he can't, his sexuality, your sexuality is your whatever. It's either hanging or it's not. Right. And if, if you're hanging, you're a man. So, many of my friends are drag queens. They look like women. Some have had breasts in chicks with you know. D-I-C-K-S. Right, right. And 
so I don't really consider Bruce Jenner a woman. And to be the woman of the year with a penis, is, to me, just very confusing. And I'm gay. So, I mean, I understand. But right. he has he has the sex change like Christine Jorgensen did. And mm -hmm. she became a woman. And I have a very dear friend of ours from Mexico. She's a very famous transsexual in Mexico. And she's married to a doctor who's a straight man. And they've been married for like 30 years or something like that. Happily married. Mm -hmm. And she's a total woman. But I mean, she is a woman in every way. You'd never know she was ever a man. And she has a vagina and married a straight guy. She should have been the one who to be famous. But she's very famous in Mexico. I wish I could remember her name. <laughs> so terrible. But Drew, 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 wait, Drew, Drew's going to help me. Drew's in the chat room. Drew King. Remember I met her up at uh, your house with Danae. She came from Mexico. She was lovely. Very fun. Very like chi 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 cha cha girl. So if you remember her name, Drew, please uh, type it in. Yeah, he's not, nothing going there yet. Nothing. I can't but don't remember. Forget, her name. That whole family of the... Uh, what are what are they the it's like the family that'll never go away because of the reality shows oh, Kardashians? yes thank you um they were so hugely famous so i mean that that plays into you know i think why bruce jenner's journey became so famous but i really uh labels on humanity is a weird thing to me because either you're cool or you're not and i being a cool or good, solid, quality human being to me doesn't know gender or race. I agree with you a hundred percent. Any well, of cool. that crap, like it's it's for me a label is just sticking somebody, anybody doesn't matter what your label is. I'm a woman. That's you know practically uh, a pre-existing it's a label in itself. You know? It is. So you know, putting the labels on on humanity is is shoving everybody into these little corners so that other people don't have to think about it and it's not sticky or messy it's nice and neat and clean life is messy and mm -hmm. either you're a good solid quality human doing your best to to do do you or you're not and i don't think any label is going to make it better or worse for any of us Dad, you got a little, i like, agree with you and i'm sure that. that drew king agrees drew and king drew by wrote, the way drew wrote her name was alejandro bogue do you know who she is mexican mm -mm. actress dancer advocate and beautiful and it's a good friend cool. i her. love her i fell in love 10 Actually, minutes she's coming on the show i think oh she is yeah i think i i, think I, I met her on the show. 10 minutes later i was mesmerized by her she was beautiful and talented and intelligent and wonderful and i thought to myself how could people crazy people kill a woman like her and transsexuals are being murdered every day in large amounts so are gay men. because well, wait, transsexuals more so because men pick them up and then murder them because they are attracted to them and hate themselves for being yep. attracted to them yeah, and, exactly. and knowing they were men so we've got to really work with drew king and a lot of other people to stop the slaughtering of transsexual people. One other thing, I can't say this because I really don't have permission. Don't say it then, because you already get us in a lot of trouble. <laughs> no, 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 no. This, this, I'm going to put it this way. We have a family member in our family who has two children, twins. One is a boy, one is a girl. The boy one does not want to be a boy. He only dresses like his sister. He only, and he calls himself something else. He's eight years old. So we work with him constantly. And I told my relative, I said, please, whatever you do, don't make him be ashamed of what he does. Mm -hmm. Buy him dresses. Do everything like you do for the other daughter. And the family's been wonderful. And, you know, they're Italian from New York, and they have a different mentality. Years ago, if I would have mentioned this, they would have said to me, kill the kid. You know, kill it. It shouldn't be alive because it's a freak. Yeah. So we have to get over all of this bullshit about, yep. you know, my, mind your business, okay? If I want to wear high heels tomorrow, I want to wear them. What's it to you? What do you care? What right have you got to laugh at me, demean me, make fun of me because I'm weird or crazy? I like high heels. So, yep. did, so did Tony Curtis. And what business <clears throat> is it of yours? Exactly. You know, it, it you is, if, if we are not outwardly injuring another human being, then nobody has the right to be all up in our grill about a damn thing we're doing. 
I love that all up in our grill. <laughs> now, what do you think about gay people? Jimmy and I are legally married. We were married five years ago in New York City. Congratulations. Thank you. What do you think That's about so gay great. marriage? I think, give this a second, I think it's stupid that it was ever an issue. Exactly. Because it should have never been an issue. It should have been, it, 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 gay marriage, straight mar marriage is marriage. And when it became such an issue, it was like, this is the stupidest thing we can be arguing about. People are dying. People are starving. People are homeless. And, and we look what we are, carry on about. Mm -hmm. And we're being petty by saying that gay people aren't allowed to get married. Oh, my God. That's bananas to me. So I am so fantastic with it. One of my very best friends in the entire world. She is like family to me. Kimberly Amato, a beautiful human being, beautiful woman, married to a beautiful woman they are this strong compassionate beautiful couple whom i respect and admire and adore and i don't adore and admire admire and respect them because they are a gay married couple but it's because of who they are as human right. beings and what they have to bring to the table of humanity period it now what is what is your nationality mostly a white chick with a big fat splash of cherokee okay so your background, Mostly white well, no, no, no. I thought, because she said she was born in Mexico or New Mexico. Where'd you New, Mex yeah, New, New Mexico. Yeah. New Mexico. And I thought she very possibly could be Mexican. Now, we have a lot of trouble with some Mexicans because of the mentality of Christianity and religion. So in California, especially where we have a great population of Honduras, Mexican, Nicaragua, you know, all those people that came up to L.A., they seem to be the, the biggest uh, homophobe killers of gay men. Um, are you sure it's not white dudes that are? That are well, no, we, we have a percentage men. of white. I'm not picking on a race. Believe me, yeah. I'm not. I'm, I, you know, I don't want to be like Donald Trump, but, you know, there, <laughs> is, a, there, is, a cert, there is a certain amount of, you know, what's happening. You have to face the truth. Mm -hmm. Uh, because in the gay community, most of the guys that get beat up are by the Latinos, because Latinos are are macho, and they don't like faggots. You know, they don't. And if you look at it, if you're walking down the street and you smile at a, a Mexican or whatever Latino person or any person, and they beat you up, that's got to stop too. No Across one has the right to beat anybody up for whatever your stupid reasons are. No, so it really doesn't matter who And I'm is. not so picking on Mexicans well, because I, I have many, many Mexican friends that I love. Look at what's going on in Chechnya, though. They're just throwing them off a roof I mean, my real, my real estate agent in Palm Springs, <laughs> Courtney, is my love, and she's Mexican. So, you know, they're wonderful Mexican people. So hold on. we gotta, we got to bring this away to wrap up because we've got to go. Oh, no, we're not going to wrap up. Yes, we're going to bring you back. She's so time. interesting when, when and you intelligent. Have an actual, when, you have, when you have a, a film to, and you're ready to like get it out and, and ready to help get it promoted and everything, we'll bring you back and we'll talk about it more um, since we didn't get to do too Perfect. much of that. You're a fabulous interviewer. We'd rather talk about humanity anyway. It's all good. Yeah, it's, all, it's all good. So first of all, uh, do you have anything coming up that we should tell everybody about that they should be looking for you in or no? You know, not that I've been acting in as much, but I am on the post-production phase of a documentary that Kimberly Amato and I have co-produced and co-directed called Rise of the Millennial. Okay. Really excited about that because it's the first documentary that I've ever, I never knew I would get, was going to make a documentary. It was never on my radar until suddenly it was. And I'm really excited about it. It talks about, well, millennials. And we ask a lot of really great questions with millennials as far as gun control and uh, the idea of being raised in a time of terrorism. Like millennials don't know what it's like to live in the world without the threat of terror. Mm -hmm. That idea, I, I found it pretty fascinating to investigate that idea because we do, you know, we all know, those of yes. us that we together, we all know exactly what it was like before. Well the threat of terrorism. How about this? You're six years old, and the teacher said, everybody under the desk because the bomb is coming, the, the atom bomb. That's how I was raised. Yep. I was raised with hate Japanese people because they're bad. Drrr, we kill you, Yankee dog. Every movie was a Japanese. Yeah. So I grew up being terrified of Japanese people as a young boy. If I saw a Japanese family, I'd say to my mother, oh, they're going to kill us because that's how we were taught. Same thing with Germans and Nazis. I have 
three or four great German friends who hate it. They say every friggin' movie has to be a Nazi film showing us Germans as hideous, hateful people, when in reality, they're lovely people. So I think film has to watch it. And film has to be very careful. You're talking about films that you saw, though, 50 years ago. Well, because 50 years ago, when yes, Roosevelt but, okay. President, yeah. Ro President Roosevelt didn't give a shit. He knew the Nazis were killing the Jews by the millions. Roosevelt never did anything to prevent it. He knew Pearl Harbor was coming. But he right, wanted okay. to get into the war, so he let Pearl Harbor happen. So let's, hold on, Wait, let's excuse go back. me. Getting to my, with getting Gold to my, Duncan in Vietnam. Wait, getting to my point. Every president that we have had, including present-day president, stink. Okay? <laughs> we haven't had a decent president, maybe from George Washington. I don't know about that. I wasn't around. <laughs> but every president should have been hated the way they hate Donald Trump. But they didn't, because back then they had respect for the president, no matter who he was. It was a thing called respect. He represents. We don't your, have respect anymore. No, he represents your country, and you must represent respect him. How do you expect other countries to respect your man if you don't respect him? You may disagree, you may hate him, but you cannot malign him or his wife by calling his wife a, a whore. I mean, that's disgraceful. We never did things like that years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, Eleanor Roosevelt had a black lover who was a woman. She was a lesbian. Do you think it would get out to the public? Do you think they ever called a you-know-what loving Let Dyke? No. They never had Twitter, though, social media. Right. I know that, but social media has got to put a handle on it now. We've got to bring respect back. I mean, how would you like it now if I said disrespectful things to you? Big deal. You'll walk away, but you know what? The word is out. So yep. you can't We do are that. technically on social media, yeah. You can't. We're media. Jimmy and I are big time. We have four and a half million people that listen and watch this show. So I could say whatever I want and damage anybody I want, but I don't do that because I respect people, especially if they come on our show. We totally respect them. And, that, have, anyway. and that's what makes you different from a lot of humans that are out there right now. Absolutely. Oh, I would never. I mean, never would I. Huh? Could you imagine? I mean, there's there's a lot of people out there who would who would uh, do the exact opposite and just roast anybody they have the opportunity to. You don't have the right to do that That's because right. you said before labels. Yet people are putting labels on that family in Washington. No one knows how I voted. OK, I never tell anybody because you'll hate people will hate you. You'll lose you know, fans. So nobody knows how I voted. I never said a bad word about Hillary, and I've never said a bad word about Donald. I have my own opinions, which they're pretty strong, okay? But I'm not going to go public with it. I'm not going to add insult to the injury. I'm not going to disrespect my country, my flag, okay. or the man that we represents go. We it. We're like way out of time. Well, she's smart. I could talk and tell her. We'll bring her back. Hold on. So first I of love, all, I love you. What's your name again? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> okay, so hold look on. at those First teeth. All, look guys... at that smile. Listen, let me tell you something. When your husband comes go. home, you tell him he best kiss your ass every day because he's so lucky to have you as a wife. I'm telling you right now, you are. I will a tell him that as soon as we're done. I will send him that text. You're a beautiful mother. You're a beautiful woman. You're an intelligent woman. You're interesting. You're fascinating, you. and I and I love you. Thank and you. I wish you all the best. Oh, that's so cute. She, passed, she, she loves She's that. She's totally out. So when Rise of the Millennial is ready to be making its rounds and everything, we can bring you and Miss Amato on together. You guys can both come on, and we'll talk to both of you about it and help promote cool. it. All you got to do is like, let me know. Um, your Twitter is Mighty MCT. What does the MCT stand for? Michelle Mc someone? T Mighty McT. Amato, Kimberly Amato, actually gave me the nickname of Mighty McT. Hey, so you guys, if you want to follow Michelle Tomlinson on Twitter, it's at the Mighty McT, T H E M I G H T Y M C T. Um, do you have a website or any place that we should send people to to find out anything? Yeah, uh, Michelle Tomlinson dot net is always a great website. Okay, you guys, you can check out yep. her stuff there. Follow her on Twitter, um, and congratulations on so much on on Baby Hope. We think it's really like, yep. phenomenal. And I want to thank Joe Williamson for actually like introducing us to you uh, to thank have you. come on the show. He's a really cool guy. And anytime you have anything to promote, let us know. And anytime you need anything re-put out to the world, just tag me or send me a message on Twitter and we'll get it out to everybody. And I thank have you. to say, 
indeed, it was a pleasure meeting you. And Ditto I mean that. that. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. I mean that. Bye, Bye sweetheart. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What a lovely human being. I am so impressed with her. I hope everybody listening out there is also as impressed. If everyone thought as she did, we wouldn't have any problems in this world. We would all get along well. And the violence and the hatred and the, and the vulgarity and all the crap that we spew would not be here. It wasn't it? Was I got it? a frantic message from her yesterday because she was like, I can't get a babysitter. The babysitter. I and love I the like, fact. Oh, don't worry. Bring the baby. No, on. I love the fact that she came with her baby. Watch. That's bad. That's too bad if anybody didn't like the baby. I love the baby. Yeah, so that's sure sweet. Hey, she Chad. was beautiful. Beautiful girl. Hey, 